Hello again, friends. Today we're looking at the operating principle of a pulse oximeter, and we'll be putting together our own solution using the MAX 3102 pulse oximeter sensor and in ESP32. It's a neat little project that's interesting and has practical application. To start with, what's a pulse oximeter? Well, it's a device that can be used to monitor oxygen saturation of a person's blood through the skin. That is, it can indirectly me measure uh, blood oxygen saturation in a non-invasive way. They can be used to monitor for issues with respiratory function, for example. Now, what's the principle of operation? Essentially, it relies on the properties of light absorption of blood, which varies significantly depending on how oxygenated it is. Oxygenated hemoglobin is the combination of oxygen and hemoglobin. Essentially, hemoglobin molecules saturated with oxygen molecules. Deoxygenated uh, hemoglobin, as you would imagine, lacks oxygen. Oxygenated uh, hemoglobin releases oxygen and is exchanged for carbon dioxide, resulting in the deoxygenated stuff. The deoxygenated hemoglobin makes its way to the lungs, where oxygen once again binds to the hemoglobin as we breathe. Basically, an exchange happens in the lungs where the used uh, deoxygenated blood becomes oxygenated again so it can be carried to the rest of the body and the cycle continues over and over again. Oxygenated hemoglobin is bright red in color, while deoxygenated hemoglobin is dark red in color. And so oxygenated hemoglobin absorbs more infrared light and not so much red light while deoxygenated hemoglobin doesn't absorb as much infrared light while absorbing more red light. Thus, with a combination of LEDs that transmit red and infrared light, along with a light sensor like a photodiode, we can measure blood oxygenation. So we place the LEDs and photodiode against the skin, arranged so that the photodiode can detect the light. Pulse oximetry can be done through a transmissive mechanism where the LEDs transmit light through a thin area of the body, like an earlobe or finger, uh, to the photodiode on the other side. Alternatively, it can be done through a reflective mechanism where the LEDs and photodiode um, are on the same side of the skin surface, but the photodiode detects the reflected light. We'll be talking about the reflective method mostly now because that's how the MAX 3102 sensor works and even uh, devices like I'm holding here. If we look at a graph that shows um, a hemoglobin's absorption of light at different wavelengths, you can see how this principle can be exploited. The oxygenated blood depicted as the red line absorbs uh, little red light here below 700 nanometer wavelength while the deoxygenated blood depicted as the blue line absorbs red light uh, much more. In the infrared, infrared light region above 900 nanometer wavelength, we can see oxygenated blood absorbs uh, more of the light while deoxygenated blood absorbs much less of it. And so the photodiode or light detector is used to measure the amount of light that is reflected by the blood, which is also the equivalent of measuring how much light is not absorbed by the blood. This is done for red and infrared light frequencies uh, in sequence. Based on the ratio of red light to infrared light measurements, a blood oxygenation estimate is produced. The relationship between the ratio and corresponding oxygenation level is an empirically determined one. So basically, we use a lookup table for any given ratio to determine oxygenation. I'm glossing over the ratio calculation details, but essentially that's the idea. Let's jump to the use of the MAX 3102 device for building our own pulse oximeter. First, a quick look at the datasheet. The device is an integrated pulse oximeter module that includes the LEDs, photodetectors, and other circuitry. You can see from the system diagram, it includes 
uh, red and infrared LEDs and LED drivers, a photodiode, um, analog to digital converter, filtering circuitry, and an I squared C interface that we can use to communicate with a microcontroller. And what I've got here is a small breakout board for the Max 3102. I picked up a couple of these off of Amazon for a few dollars each. On the front side, we've got the sensor itself, along with some discrete components, resistors and caps. On the back side, we've got screen printing to indicate the pin functions, along with a voltage select. It looks like we should solder a jumper for 3.3 volts here. The documentation for this thing isn't the greatest, but we can figure it out based on the schematic and examining the board itself. There is a GitHub repository that includes reference code we can leverage. As usual, I will include a link that will include all the code I use in this video in the description. Now, I've soldered the voltage select to use 3.3 volts as mentioned along with headers so I can mount the module on a proto board and connect jumper wires to my ESP32. I've connected the I2C interface from the MAX3102 board to the dedicated I2C I.O. on the ESP32, along with the 3.3 volt supply and ground. We only need to connect these four pins for the device to work, and we will be uh, printing out results to our PC running a serial monitor uh, via the serial USB interface between the ESP32 and the PC. For the C code, which we'll be compiling and uploading uh, via Arduino IDE, you'll want to install the SparkFun Max 3010X uh, pulse and proximity sensor library uh, through the library manager. Now, oddly enough, if you attempt to use the example ske sketches associated with that library, you'll have a tough time. I got some nonsensical results, and from what I've seen online, this is a common issue. You'll want to use code based on what's in the GitHub repository. Again, I'll share the modified code I used in this video. You can study the code on your own, and there isn't much to it, really. Now, I will show you the connected board in action. I've clamped a commercial pulse oximeter to one of my fingers for reference values, and I place my index finger on the MAX3102 device and patiently wait for the readings to settle. You can see the serial monitor output printing the results from the ESP32 board. Once you study the code, you'll see that there's a low-pass filter being used on the data. That's why it takes some time for the reported values to settle. But you can see oxygen, oxygen saturation levels about 98% that match with the reference device. If I take my finger off the device, it reports no finger detected. And once I put my finger back on the device, uh, it detects it and starts reporting values again. Uh, again, taking some time for it to reach the correct value. I've tried it out on different people in the vicinity of the Tinker Foundry with similarly good results. I even tried hyperventilating to affect my own blood oxygen saturation levels so I could get readings different from my baseline. You can see it reaches 99% in both my reference device and with our ESP32 base solution. This was an interesting and successful experiment with pulse oximetry using the MAX3102. I'll continue to work with this uh, device to more fully understand its operation, and we'll also see about reporting pulse rate along with oxygen saturation. I hope you found this interesting and informative. Until next time, Keep tinkering.